Mike. Doing good. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking the time. I appreciate it. We'll get right into it here. And I find it hard to believe, and this is just according to the, the press release for the tour and the upcoming song you guys are doing together, The Sea of Emotion, uh, part one that's coming out in a couple weeks. I find it hard to believe with the amount of time you've known each other and the amount of time you've spent making music that is it true that this is your first like real musical collaboration together? It is, yeah. Um, we've uh, done a lot of tours together. We've done live DVDs, live albums, uh, you know, the G3 uh, concert series. Uh, we've appeared on other people's albums doing, you know, solos together. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this is the first time that we really decided to write new music together and, you know, not doing cover songs or, or doing a sort of a guest appearance album and uh, creating a new album of new songs, not knowing what we're going to do each time we move on to the next song. And uh, so this is a real collaboration that's been in the making since, what, 1971 or something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because we, you know, we we've gone through our whole careers, uh, you know, writing and releasing records, solo records, and that's a, you know, that's kind of like an inside job, you know, where you're you're sitting in your studio or you're, uh, you know, contemplating how you're going to build a track. But when and then you can, you know, in the past we've uh, played together and sort of contributed to things. But it's very different when you're actually writing a piece of music with somebody because you're entering, you know, a whole different kind of communication zone. And uh, it's it's a completely different. And it's so nice that it's happening now. And, and it's definitely paying off because the creativity is really flowing between us. And, you know, just with sending parts back and forth and, hey, you know, how do you like this? And what are you hearing on this? And it's really just um, co-creation at its best. Now, for people that don't know, uh, Joe or Steve, Joe is your your guitar teacher in the very beginning when you guys first met, and now you're finally working together. You're going to do a tour, but is that is that still kind of in the background there, Steve? Do you still feel like you know Joe's the teacher? You know, I better I better play well for him. I mean, not just as a as a peer, but still as a you know like a, a, a master and student thing. Like, is Joe going to, in between songs on the tour, is Joe going to go, hey, Steve, why don't you try putting your fingers here and maybe getting a better... <laughs> and if not, he will discipline me. Right. He's got a ruler. <laughs> he's just smack my fingers in the cold, Long Island. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's just such an interesting story because we're both, you know, these Italian kids from Long Island. We grew up in the same town, went to the same schools, Joe was uh, just a couple of years older, so he, he and he could play the guitar, and so he was part of the the cool big kid group, uh-huh. you know. But my guitar lessons were uh, everything; they meant everything to me. And when you have somebody like that uh, in your life, that like I had Joe, he's a he's, he's a, a, a a monolith in a sense, you know, a mentor. So those lessons were so important, and for me, my whole goal was to do my very best to be able to go back to my lesson and play it in a way that, uh, you know, Joe can approve it. And some things just stick, you know what I mean? So that, uh, that, that teacher-student kind of relationship, it's, it is in the background. You never kick those things, but it served me so well through my entire life because there, there's some place in the back of my mind when I'm recording something or I'm playing something, you know, I, I wonder if it's, it's good enough for my my teacher and my lesson, you know. And so Joe is, has been sort of, uh, you know, mentoring me my whole life, psychologically and and physically. So uh, it's been a, a, a dream. Well, first of all, uh, Joe, great job with Steve. <laughs> I think the lesson's paid off. <laughs> uh, that whammy bar out of his hand. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I want to ask for both of you guys, uh, you know, when I, I'm a huge Rush fan, and in my teen years, when I found out that Neil Peart, uh, their late drummer, still took lessons, I was just blown away. Like, why would he need to take lessons? But I realized later, the more and more I, I paid attention, that all the greats still, still get mentoring here and there. And do you guys either still take lessons, uh, you know, Steve, whether it's with Joe or, or anyone else? Well, you're constantly taking lessons all the time just by 
being exposed to other players, other environments. Uh, but what you're talking about traditionally, yeah, it's not uncommon. I, I don't, I haven't done it. But if there was a um, a particular style that I was interested in, in you know, learning, I would definitely seek out a teacher that's really proficient at it. That's a it's a good point. One thing that uh, a lot of people don't really realize is that you know when we're out let's say, touring with our bands, we're, in a way, we're getting instruction from our band members that have got talents in maybe other areas where uh, ours are a little bit undiscovered or undeveloped. And I can say that, you know, playing with my bass player, Brian Beller, my keyboard rhythm guitar player, Ray Disselthwaite, and Kenny Aronoff on drums, that I am so interested in playing with them every night because they do things outside of my expertise that blow me away and I make a conscious effort every show to pick up on it and to sort of take a lesson from them to see uh, if I can get in on that somehow, if I can absorb it, you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, you don't necessarily, if you're a guitar player, need to go to a guitar teacher. You can learn mm -hmm. lots of things that are so important to a musician uh, from musicians who play other instruments. Um, just like you would sitting down with seasoned manager, agent, uh, mm. publicist, publisher. These are all part of all, our world, and you can never stop learning. You know, you can never learn enough about all, all the aspects of, of your world, you know. So you, you mentioned if you were looking to learn a particular style, you would, you would seek that person out or, or study that person. As far as guitarists go... If you could both uh, answer, who is your favorite non-rock guitarist? Like, I'll start. Like, I, to me, Leo Kotke is someone who just doesn't get enough credit as being a great guitar player, not necessarily a rock guitar player. What about you guys? Well, you know, I could say, because uh, I, I was just uh, listening to this guy yesterday, one of my uh, students when I was uh, teaching in a little store in Berkeley, California, was this young kid named Charlie Hunter who turned into mm. really a musician. Yeah. And uh, Charlie just like, I mean, he just has his own world. Charlie Hunter is his own style. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's truly amazing. I, you know, I could spend decades just sitting down trying to figure out how to get so much music out of one guitar with two hands. So, yeah, Charlie would be the one. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, you know, there was a time for me, probably about uh, 15, 20 years ago, where I actually thought about taking some lessons from Scott Henderson. Uh, he has some great uh, melodic kind of inner ear stuff that uh, I wanted to explore. And uh, there's a, a couple of other uh, players that I would love to have taken a lesson from. Alan Holdsworth. Mm. <laughs> I oh, actually yeah. had an opportunity. Yeah, I was working with him way, way back in the early 80s uh, when I moved out to California and I was transcribing, and he was writing a chord book, and he didn't really have a lot of... Uh, he had, Alan had his own musical language completely, so he needed to have it sort of transcribed into conventional manuscripts. So I got a lesson, boy, wow. Uh, but the, yeah, there's a lot of players that um, I'd love to sit and pick their brains. Well, it's been a pleasure and an honor speaking to both of you guys. You've, you've brought a lot of great music into this world, you know, yourselves and with other people. And we're very much looking forward to see what happens on stage at the Orpheum in Boston. That's on April 5th, the Satch Vi Tour. Uh, thanks a lot, gentlemen. I really appreciate your time and good luck.